All right, welcome back, everyone, to another late night here on the East Coast. How y'all doing? Um, hopefully, it's working now. For some reason, the audio recorded on Twitch, but pardon me, no one was able to get it. I don't know. Um, either way, so Harvester is a pretty cool game in the sense that it's got a lot of things I like. We've talked about before: FMV, uh, full voice acting, love that. It's got some very heavy themes, which is always exciting and fun to sort of talk about and, and think about. It's good stuff. Um, here's our gameplay tip of the day. If you're stuck on a puzzle, talk to other characters, they'll give you clues. Eh, doesn't really matter. So this is our main character here. Uh, this is... Steve? Yeah. This is Steve. Ah, oh, look at us. We're a good guy. It's Monday. Uh, Harvester is a game you can lose. So we are going to be saving. This will be day one. Um, there are certain things that you have to do every day. If you don't do them all, you will lose by the end of it. This is a 148 scale of a P47 Thunderbolt with a broken propeller. Fair enough. A lot of the things you interact with in the game, uh, examining-wise, don't actually matter. They're just there for sort of fun. Clarinet. Obviously some fat high school girl left it there. Nice. Classy. Starting off strong. Handful of faded hardbacks. All right. A vase with a recently watered plastic plant. And this is where you start telling, maybe the world of Harvester is a bit odd. Also, Bard mentioned uh, population 51. You're not a city, you're not a town, you're a bus station. My hometown has a population of 50-ish. Um, it's currently sub-100 anyway. Player plastic binoculars with the lenses melted to the table. Empty acne medicine container, yeah. Photo of a beautiful girl, blonde, about 17 years old. Oh, my, my. Um, we did have a little bit of cheesecake for the ladies, so we know that Steve is quite the macho man. Mattress is speckled with odd stains. Always good to know. I'm trying to learn things about Steve, and this is going to be important because we're about to find out that Steve has amnesia. Uh, a common trope, but done fairly well in this game. I actually quite like it, um, as far as amnesia games go. Official Dust Bowl basketball, okay. Not important. Empty trash can, so clean you can eat from it. You peer through a thin layer of dust at your reflection. Dresser drawer is unlocked. Ooh, what have we got in here? A pen. Chew marks are visible. Yeah, excellent. Anything else? This is a hidden pixel game, if you haven't noticed. As of yet, the future isn't so bright. Amazing. 25 cent piece dated 1952. Take that. Double check there's no other hidden things in here. There might not be, but I remember a lot of these games do have sort of things you can miss. And if you miss them, you're screwed. Seem to be good for now. Uh, again, I haven't beat the game for a very long time. What are your typical wall clocks? Illumination is the key to visibility. Hmm. Um, so, there may be things I forget, and hopefully we can still complete the game without having to concert a uh, consult walkthrough. Okay, paper doll with the Mills Brothers. Sandal shoes with lace knots tied together. Cheap folding chair. Seven flannel shirts accompanied by matching blue jeans are hanging neatly in the closet. So we are Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Sexy pinup. <laughs> well, thanks, Steve. That's good. So, so you can walk in this game, as you can tell. Uh, the animations are gorgeous. This game took two and a half years to make. So they, they better have a nice walk cycle. <sighs> yeah, it's not very good. And here we're going to interact with our first major NPC of the game. Our son of a bitch brother. Sunny depiction of the earth made of paper mache. Papier mache, no less. That's the master bedroom here. Master bedroom door is firmly locked. Most things we're not going to need to examine, um, but we are, and I'll just say the ones that sort of seem funny. Pass through the kitchen window. Fine bone china gleams from the mahogany shelves. So the thing, yeah, I streamed this for Zelfis 
before I met Kaylin, so it would have been, I want to say, eight years ago. We'd never finished it, though, and it gets a lot crazier once we get a little past it. Actually, I believe I streamed it for my mom and my sister as well, um, like at the same time. Um, box full of newspapers. Let's go pick up a newspaper, shall we? Put that in our image. Oh, shit. Let's, let's see you later, kid. Raymond, you got the paper? Good. Let's talk to Hank. What? Who are you? Leave me alone, Steve, or I'll tell Mom on you. Alright, let's ask uh, Hank about Mom. Mom's in the kitchen, and if you bug me, I'll call her. Look, I just... Do you know me? Wish I didn't, because then you wouldn't be my brother, and I'd have your room, and all the presents at Christmas. Though I will soon enough anyway, because you're a lousy rat. You're my brother? Wow. No, duh. Listen, I don't mean to, uh, bug you, but I can't seem to remember anything. Will you please just tell me who you are? Mom, Steve is bugging me. Steve, leave Hank alone right now. So, um, how's the audio? Is it okay? Because, um, now, this room's a little bit screwy because we have the TV. Um, let's find Hello. out. Finally. If turning, sorry, my family's going crazy at the moment. Let's find out if turning down the. Okay, so the TV counts as music. That's nice. So we can turn it up one, so we can hear some things later. Leave me alone, will ya? This is the good part. Wow, it's pretty cool, Hank. I like the kind of television you watch. Good. Finally. Let's go see what Mom has to say. Hey, cookies? Cookies are hot out of the oven. Mm mm. Nice music here. Fireman Sparky's super foamy fire extinguisher. Cool, cool. Cookies are baking in the oven. I mean, you got some here. I don't know if you need any more. I guess we could talk to our mother, shall we? Well, hello there. How about some cookies? There's plenty of rejects in the trash. Who are you? That's a fine way to talk to your mother. You're my mother? That's right. Though sometimes I get treated like the hired help around here. I don't remember you. Of course you don't. Until you need your socks washed. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I can't remember where I am or even who I am. Land's sake, stop your joshing, won't you? Honestly, Steve, I thought you'd grow up a little after graduation. I only hope that new job will plant your feet on the ground. So that's my name. Steve. Your name will be M.U.D. Mud if you don't stop teasing me, young man. Listen, this may sound strange, but I've lost my memory. Do you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. Sure, and next you'll be telling me you don't remember Hank and your little sister. I, I don't, I'll be honest. You always were a kidder, Steve, is a, a phrase we'll be hearing a lot in this game that drove Zelfus nuts. <laughs> when did I graduate? Four months ago, as if you could forget that. What college? College? A high school diploma is all you need to get a job. And besides, you can't marry Stephanie if you're going to waste your time going to college. 18 years old and you're just now getting your first job. It's a disgrace, but better late than never. I guess we can thank Stephanie for that. Hmm. Stephanie sounds like quite the lady. And just who is Stephanie? Don't you dare toy with that sweet girl. If you start in on her with all this amnesia poop, she'll think her fiancé is having second thoughts about the wedding. Look, all this talk about weddings is nuts. I'm not marrying anybody till I figure out what's going on here. First the heartbreak of psoriasis and now this. Two weeks before the wedding and you're backing out, whatever will the neighbors think? I can't marry someone I don't even know. Fine, have it your way, but leave me out of it. If you're going to break Stephanie's heart, you march right next door and do it yourself. And don't expect me to write you a note. So this game um, may be a little bit heavy-handed with some of the messages. But it's still wonderful. God bless the 60s. Fiance? This is insane! Oh, you're not having second thoughts about marrying Stephanie. Is that what this silliness is all about? Pre-wedding jitters? 
Can something like that produce amnesia? Stop this foolishness right now and count your blessings. Stephanie is great at cooking and cleaning. Yeah. What's cooking and cleaning got to do with anything? Honestly, boys are so dense. What else is there for a wife but cooking and cleaning? You may not appreciate a hot meal on a clean plate when it's there, but if it wasn't, we'd hear about it soon enough, I'll bet. You're saying that's all there is to marriage? Cooking and cleaning? Well, you'll uh, have to ask your father about that, but I'm sure Stephanie will do her duty when the time comes. Ooh -hoo. Bless your innocence, but there are certain disgusting truths that go along with marriage. Facts that can't be disguised by sheets which wrap around the contours of flexing go-go's and bouncing legs. You can't know what I'm talking about and that's best. When the time comes to make a baby with Stephanie, you'll have to make your peace with the fact that when a farmer plants his seed, he can't help but get some nasty dirt on his hoe. Wow. That's one way to put it. My father. I don't remember my He's father. He's in the other room. He decided to sleep in today. Now please, let me get back to my cookies. Oh, tell me about your cookies. The bake sale is on Friday, and yet you're baking the cookies now. Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. But they'll be stale by then. That's why I'm throwing them away. And then cooking more? To replace the ones I throw out. Why? Well, I have to. No one's going to pay to eat stale cookies out of the garbage can. But you expect me to. Of course not, Steve. I wouldn't charge you. I'm your mother. Help yourself. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, so today's Monday, for the record. What charity is this bake sale supposed to benefit? It'll help provide a fund for bums and hobos who wander into harvest and have no family ties. Kind of a specific target group, isn't it? <laughs> yes. You have to pay attention to detail when dealing with such people. I don't know what you mean. You will. The whole thing has been organized by the Lodge. Tell me more about this bake sale. Why is it so important? As I told you, many unfortunates who come to Harvest end up needing financial help. Why is that the town's problem? It's not a problem, so long as those folks are taken care of. It's the will of the Lodge. Hmm. The Lodge, huh? What Lodge? The Hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon, Steve. It's just the finest place in Harvest, and the most exclusive. What's so great about it? Hard to say, since hardly anyone gets inside. But it wouldn't be so exclusive if it wasn't just wonderful. Just like the new Reynolds dishwasher with their patented auto-dry process TM. I've never used one, but I know I want it. Instead of sulking around the house all day, why not walk over to the lodge and apply for membership? Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> Last thing I want is a fez on my head. Huh. Uh, well, we are going to be going to the lodge at some point. I'm trying to apply there. Um, let, let's egg her on, though. Don't be so hasty, Steve. I think you'll find Harvest is a pretty dull place without the lodge. You sound like the membership director. Don't be silly. I just want what's best for you, that's all. <laughs> green soy. You mean soy lane green? <laughs> but yes. No, we're not eating human. Don't, don't worry, origami. Um, although, anyone curious as to how weird this game gets. We're about to be witnessing a bit of a graphic scene. Man, Granny is just going ape shit in the bath. Harvest is a town unlike any you've ever known. In what way? I don't have time to go into it now. Why not take a walk around town and pester someone else? I'm busy. <laughs> if this town was any more of a cult, they'd be wearing red robes and sacrificing the infant in the foreground. <coughs> Sorry. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Yeah, don't worry, I'll put the papers out for Jimmy. Um, can't take any of those cookies. Uh, I guess we'll we'll get to the baby. Everyone wants me to click the baby. Newborn sleeping soundly. Oh, never mind. It's all good, guys. Oh, huh? Okay, I can't check on the baby. Oh, dirty diapers in that cabinet. That's good. I told you I'm busy, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna ask about baby. Stop speaking nonsense, dear. Um, sister? Sister? Shh, you'll wake her. I just put her down to sleep. If she wakes up, she'll just want to eat again. 
darn it, I'm busy, and if you think I'm going to play along with this nonsense, you're crazier than Sparky down at the firehouse. Fine. Maybe I am crazy. I can't rule that out. Why can't you just help me a little? Is that too much to ask? Now you've done it. Are you happy? Poor baby. There, there. Did your brother scare you? Let me see. Oh. Oh. Damn it, baby. Darn that wasp woman. She's a monster, that's what she is. She sure is. Um, so, the thing about this game is, is you can tell there's, there's keywords you can type in as well as ones that come through conversation. Sometimes you'll lose ones that you had option to before, and you're going to have to remember them if you want to trigger that conversation chain again. Uh, a little bit annoying. On the plus side, it means you can <laughs> sometimes glitch the game by activating things a little too early. Who's Sparky? Who cares about that prancing, fire hydrant squatting sissy boy right now? Your sister's eating a tarantula and you're still fooling around. If she's my sister. Enough! Go bother Hank or Stephanie, why don't you? I'm trying to bake cookies! Yeah, this game's great. It still blows my mind this took, like, over two years to make. <laughs> um, there's supposed to be a hundred different um, actors involved. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I feel like it's not. Uh, there are large, is a large cast though. I'd say at least thirty, um, as well as. Oh, uh, I guess if you count the kids in the school. But anyway, so what was the other option? There was um, the fireman and wasp woman. Wasp woman. Tetsuya Crumb is going to hear about this. I want you to go to her house right now and give her a piece of my mind. I don't know where she lives. Honestly, you can't miss a house covered with paper nests. Steve, you tell her to mind her own beeswax, or nice. by golly, I'll take it up with the PTA. Or the lodge. Oof. What's the PTA got to do with anything? Show some respect, Steve. The PTA has a lot of clout in Harvest. We run the charity bake sale, the annual blood drive, and by okay. gosh, we even have ties to the lodge. Let's ask about the annual blood drive. Annual blood drive, huh? If you knew how much blood we get, you'd be more impressed. Donations are mandatory, Steve. If you're still here come Sunday, you'll be expected to give. <laughs> Until it hurts, I suppose. Until it hurts. Even Hank will have to donate. Of course, Lodge members are exempt. Remember that. Hey, either way, no one's sticking me with the needle. We don't use needles. So it's one of the ways to lose the game, is if you're not in the, the lodge by Sunday. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Sure, I'll go pick up the paper from Jimmy, don't worry. I know, slapping the baby is such a funny scene. Uh, we're going to have some really crazy things happen. Don't you worry. Ah, frisbee, huh? Dayglow Lima Space Disc. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy James. Hey, Steve. I'm Jimmy James. Remember me? Uh, I guess not. Hey, how come you haven't been putting the paper out for me in the morning? Um, I'm supposed to? I don't remember. Yeah? Well, try to remember, will ya? How'd you expect a working Joe to make an honest living? You don't put the paper out, I'm out of a job. So what? You don't get paid for picking up papers anyway. The Sentinel building burnt down. What the heck else am I supposed to do? Listen, start putting that paper out and everything will be Jake, okay? That's all I want. That and a pair of sneakers. Walking this route every day has worn holes in mine. Say, you got any spare sneakers? Uh, no, sorry man. Oh, gee whiz. Look, if you find any, I'd be willing to trade you for them. Something really neato. Think about it. See you later, alligator. Yeah, do we give him the paper, guys, or do we piss Jimmy off? It's a tough decision. Um, uh, I'll tell you, you probably don't want to piss Jimmy off too many days in a row. Full of junk mail bills and bake sale flyers. Security bars fastened in the window with the Phillips head screws. It's interesting. I wonder what's wrong with our dad. Mm -hmm. High voltage power lines bathe your home in wholesome, old-fashioned electromagnetic field. You feel they're humming in your dreams. 
Steel barbs wrench signals from the naked air. Cool. Army surplus air conditioner. Man, the 60s were cool. Am I right, everybody? I guess we'll give him a newspaper today. There now, see how easy it is? Things are so much better between us when you remember the paper in the morning. And let's keep them that way. Yeah, uh, you're starting to worry me, Jimmy. It's that little racketeering going on here. So where do we go first? Um, we got the missile base. Hmm. We have the barber shop. The general store. Post office. The lodge. Uh, of course, you know, the Johnson residence. That would be our, our Stephanie, our love of our life. The abandoned house. The mortuary and the cemetery. We don't need to go there yet. Um, we got the good old fire station. Yeah, we learned about that, which is right beside the newspaper building that somehow burnt down. The police station. Head in his diner. TV station. The school or the meat plant. Or, or the massive missile base. Hmm. I don't know. One, one of these sounds pretty fun. Let's go check out the missile base. So, welcome to Prize Can Be Borrowed's favorite character. Um, we, we need a save here. There are many game overs you can get at this screen. Let's examine the boost. Oddly enough, this guard booth is the only building on the base. Huh. Ah, well stocked with nuclear missiles. B-17 bomber, nice. An electrified chain link fence. I guess we'll talk to Colonel Buster Monroe. Oh, who goes there? Uh, they tell me my name is Steve. Oh, right. This section 21. Keep your distance, son. I wouldn't want to have to blow your head off. That makes two of us. So you're the amnesiac, huh? Just another draft dodging ploy the way I see it. But at least you're not an alien. You see their ships every now and then. Sometimes swell bags one in the woods. Who are you? Colonel Buster Monroe, commander of the Harvest Nuclear Missile Installation. Keeping America safe from those who would dye our flag red, white, and pink. These are nuclear missiles? <laughs> Goddamn right they are. Every one of them ready to rain death on the Ruskies. I All I gotta do is hit the button and blammo! The price of vodka goes through the roof. Along with the vodka. Well, I suppose you have, you know, safeguards against accidents? Safeguards? Don't be such a weak sister. There are no safeguards. This is the 50s. Then, you have sole control of the, uh, missiles. That's right. Been in charge here since WW2. When I got my lower torso shot off in the war. Those panty wastes in Washington wanted to stick me behind a desk. To hell with that. They owed me. I left my legs in Dusseldorf. They owed me. Of course, they felt that after the trauma of having to crawl from Germany to England trailing my intestines behind me, I was too emotionally unstable to continue in the military. That's why they gave me this nice cushy job and put me in charge of the nuclear missiles. Okay. Well, <laughs> tell me you don't love them. Colonel Buster Monroe, I think we gotta. There's a lot of options here, but I think commie bastards? Right, commie bastards. Frankly, all these questions are making me a little suspicious of you. Maybe you're one of those pink blooded Americans. Can you give me any reason why I shouldn't shoot you right now? Ooh, no, not really. You can shoot me. I'm an American, I have rights. Um... Ooh, I don't know, guys. Bit of a misplay here. I'm an American? I have rights? Rights, huh? Your average commie bastard is always only too ready to hide behind the Constitution. Real Americans waive their rights for the common good. Would you? <laughs> Ooh. I refuse to surrender my rights. Um, 
for the... Yeah, sure I would. You talk a good game, mister. But so does your average commie bastard. The Kremlin teaches its agents to talk their way out of a scrape. What do you think about that, son? Communists can hardly be said to hold a monopoly on intellectual discourse. <laughs> you should have watched more TV and read less Dostoevsky if you wanted to pass for an American, comrade. Oh, shit. No! Don't do it! Oh! Oh, no! No! Oh, I'm not a very good American, sorry, guys. It's the Canadian in me. With our healthcare, we seem too much like a, a communist. Alright, well, let's try Buster Monroe again. Oh! Uh, alright. That may. Sorry, <laughs> you gave me all credits. I know, right? The God. Well, well what do we ask about? That, that, those pa that they owed me. I dragged myself back to England. Yeah, totally, dude. Okay, um, let's ask about nuclear intestines. The funny thing about it is, you wouldn't think so, but you've got about three miles of intestines in your body, all curled up. Wow. Now that came in handy as I gauged my progress. While I crawled from Germany to England, my intestines would unravel. Such that every three miles, I'd have to roll them back up and stuff them back in. It became my benchmark. What I lived for. Every time I stuffed my intestines back in, I knew I was three miles closer to freedom. In this way, I kept my sanity. That's what I told those idiots in Washington. But did they listen? No! Some weak sister shrink said I was too emotionally unstable to kill Koreans. So they transferred me to this boring stockpile of armed nuclear warheads. And to top it off, those pansy firemen won't let me join the Harvest Volunteer Fire Department. Oh, it makes you wonder. What's the point of going on? I'll have to check out these firemen. Uh... I wanted to get back into the thick of the action and out of this desk job. Firemen are a damn peculiar bunch of ladies. I thought they'd object to my lack of a lower body, but they wouldn't let me join the fire department because they said I couldn't draw naked men. Can't draw naked men? Who the hell wants to? I could draw one if I was a sick commie pervert. Look, I did this last night. What do you think? Wow, that's pretty good. I'm arts for commies anyway, I think. You don't say. Then you'd better go reconnoiter the fire station, mister. There's a lot of art going on over there. Determine if commie infiltration has occurred in Harvest. And report back here. Your report could make the difference. And what I decide to do. About what, Colonel? Never mind that, son. It's easier if you don't know. Aye, aye, Colonel. I'll, I'll be back, sir. Godspeed, I'm I'm afraid to ask you about anything else. <laughs> Remember, duck and cover. Oh, uh, you don't have too much problem doing that, do you? If you actually walk too close to him, you can see I can walk up to here, he'll just like spaz shoot you and you die anyway. I've already got our first side mission, which is great. We haven't even met Stephanie. But who needs to? Let's go beat meet my friend and beat. Oh, that's about to be a <laughs> oh jeez, Freudian slip there. Anyway, uh, let's go. Oh jeez, fire truck with a lovely shade of pink. Hmm. Let's meet Sparky. Oh, uh, that dog just got slapped or something. Please excuse the mess. They've done wonders with the upstairs bedroom, but this garage defies color coordination. Garage. All right. Go check it out. I mean, this is about what a fire station looks like. Well-endowed nude man standing in the moonlight. Sure. Storybook fairy castle. Impressionistic landscape. Phallic-like structures all standing in a row. 
<sighs> well, male model is sparky and f we'll talk to a regular farm. Don't bother me, I'm sketching. Oh, look what you made me do! I'm sorry. Stop it, you're messing me up! Sorry. Stop it, you're messing me up! Alright, okay, sorry. Let's talk to the dog, he's going ape shit. Saliva is foaming from his barking chops. Oh, let's not. <laughs> Fireplace, an accident waiting to happen. I think we'll be fine. Oh, light switch. Daintily painted with cyan light switch. Hmm. Lights are high. T hmm? Too high up to reach? Photorealistic mural of a peaceful countryside? Just another fireplace. Let's talk to Sparky. Hello, Steve. Welcome to the House of Flame, as we like to call it. Oh, cut it out, Spots, honestly. Once he gets barking, a good piece of meat is the only way to shut him up. There you go, Spot. Yep, that was a necessary cutscene. <laughs> so, Steve, bet you don't remember me. Heard about that short in the old wiring. How'd you hear that? I'm Fire Marshal Sparky, head of your fire department. Oh. Where'd you hear about my memory loss? Then why are you sketching nude men in my fire department? Both good questions. Which are we more curious about? <laughs> huh. I mean... But then... I love how, like, some just alien... It's like, um... What's the name of that shit? Uh, Twilight Zone. I think we'll, we'll ask him about memory loss. Don't be silly. Everyone thinks that that amnesia kick is a scream. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Besides, it's my job to keep abreast of developments in the community to better serve you, the public. I'm sure you'll be thrilled when you learn of the many civic improvements we have planned for your fire department. What kind of Such as... Yeah. Well... Don't tell any of the others, but I've secured a bolt of the most divine mauve material. I've hidden it because, well, if any of these Marys got a hold of it, it'd be gone in a jiffy. So I'd rather keep it hush-hush. I'm going to make new drapes for the firehouse, and if I have any left, cross your fingers, I'm going to make everyone matching mauve pillow cozy. Those are civic improvements. Don't be such a party fool, Steve. We're talking about art. <laughs> Besides, we haven't had a fire and harvest since the newspaper building burned down. Though I'll admit that the wasp woman's place is one big accident waiting to happen. Isn't that right, Spots? Okay, we're learning lots of things. I love too how when it cut to the picture of the butt, his like like talking got droned out by just this like background fan or something it's almost like Steve just like staring and just his mind melting and losing focus art enriches the community Steve no less than a pulsing fire hose or a fireman beating down a blazing door so what if we're drawing a nude man? Well, so what if all we ever draw is a nude man, or oh. the same nude man over and over in all sorts of provocative positions? Context, not content. Process, not subject. Don't be so ghost, Dave. It's beneath you. I'm learning things every day. A dreadful affair. You wouldn't think that a brick and steel building with a sprinkler system could go up that quickly. That you wouldn't. <laughs> you, I mean, you actually wouldn't. <laughs> you think it was arson? Oh, come on. I mean, I, I'm not going to rag on this guy. So what if he's drawing the same nude man over and over? A real man could be through stuff without would you, bunch of pansies. <laughs> They're trying to make our country red, white, and pink, borrowed. Oh, please. Dwayne was glad enough to see the thing go up. And so was McKnight. If you could get into that safe in his wall... <sighs> Forget it. Look, Steve, as far as I know, the fire was an accident. Let's just leave it at that. Now don't you go moving! Well, he didn't look like he had the capacity to move, to be honest. 
Some people think all we do is sit around sketching fetching examples of manhood for our own amusement. Yes. Nothing could be further oh. from the truth. Why, just the other day we cited Ted through a crumb for fire code violations. All the dried out paper wasp nests clustered around our wooden house. Why, it's a chem log just waiting for the right faggot. Believe me, none of us wants to see another fiasco like the Sentinel fire. It's a chem log just waiting for the right faggot. That is such an amazing line. Alright, bye. Bye bye. See you later. I don't know why a car kept crashing in here. That was kind of bugging out. I don't converse on the job, Steve. Then how how are you talking? I don't. Wizard. Well, all right. Wow, we've met a few people. Certainly learned a few things about harvest. What do you guys think so far? A okay or skip it? <laughs> I, I mean, I'll be playing through it either way because I, I quite like the game. Yeah, fag equals cigarettes for YouTube. Absolutely. Um, well, let's go check out the Potsdam residence, our, our little nebiers. Maybe meet our, our fiance. The garage needs a new paint job. Let's see how I look into. The glass is so clear, the re <laughs> reflection makes it difficult to see. Hmm. Well, this will be our father in law. Giant mutant asparagus, inexplicably robust given the fact that it's encased in red concrete. Wrap the healthful electromagnetic fields of harvest? Mm. Yeah, and a faggot is a bundle of sticks for kindling fire. Yep. Ashtray is shaped like a particular human organ, which name shall remain nameless. The man of the house squeezing his meat. That is... Imagine if you, <laughs> imagine if you just had that, your picture, when someone walked in your house. Funerary urn. That is the sound of wind destroying any hopes of a computer speaker. The upholstery is stained after years of profuse sweating. Hmm. Empty shelves are a testament to the Potsdam household's rigorous intellectual standards. Got the coffee stain there. It's nice. Almost made of leather. Polyester. I guess we'll, we'll talk to our father-in-law. Well, uh, about to be father-in-law. There he is, my future son-in-law. And how's he doing today? What brings him to the Potsdam household, huh? Huh? I've lost my memory. <laughs> what a card. Oh, I like Would you. I kid about something like that? Why won't you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Your mother just telephoned us about your lady's shenanigans. Isn't that right, Mrs. Potsdam? Sure did, Mr. Potsdam. You little rascal. Mom? Imagination's a swell thing to have in small amounts. Man needs to keep his feet on the ground, especially if he's getting married. <laughs> Tell me, is your father feeling better? Is he going back to the slaughterhouse anytime soon? Um, I don't know. Huh, well, it's... I mean, wow, I mean... I know they wanted to have, like, the sound of wind in this room for absolutely no reason, but, uh... This is sick. I'm supposed to marry this Stephanie, and I don't even know who she is. Now look, Steve, a joke is all well and good, but don't go scaring me like that. Why, I'm that? not joking. Now look, a commitment is a commitment. You're going to marry my daughter. We'll be one happy family, and your dad's going to give me all the meat I want. Right? Right? What? You've been hanging around the fire department? What, uh... Wait, why is Stephanie grounded? Well, don't look at me. Mrs. Potsdam wants Stephanie to study hard for her finals. If it was up to me, you could go straight upstairs, but you know... <laughs> the little woman. You'll have to ask her permission to see Stephanie. Sorry, Steve. The last thing I want to do is upset you and your father before the wedding. Not with the meat at stake. You will remind your dad about the meat. Won't you? Yeah, sure. Um, we'll talk in a minute. Yeah, is there a wind option? Okay, wind's music. Nailed it, boys. If it isn't my favorite son-in-law, what brings you here again? Um, uh, shit. Marriage? Tell me about this wedding. 
Well, it looks like we're going to have to hold the wedding down at the funeral parlor, since I'm not a member of the lodge. <laughs> Mr. Moynihan has given his okay, and your father is going to cater the affair <laughs> with plenty of meat. Why are you so anxious to get into the lodge? There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do with. Now that you're of age, Steve, you might go down to the post office and fill out a lodge application. Okay. They're always looking for new blood. Yeah, we heard about that. Hmm. Meat is the foundation of any decent society. Everyone needs at least three servings of red meat a day. And anyone who says otherwise is a commie. And once you're married to Stephanie, I'll be part of the family too. And your father will give me all the meat I want. <sighs> kind of makes up for not getting into the lodge. Yeah, uh, what about my father? I haven't seen my father. He's locked in a room. He's not going to die, is he? They might. Like I said, I don't know. That woman, Mom, tends to him herself. Well, next time you see him, be sure to tell him that I said hello. And tell him that... I'm praying for his speedy recovery. And also, would you remind him about the meat? Especially about the meat. Yeah, yeah fine. I'll bring it up. If I see him. You should be more concerned. If he dies, then who's going to take over the slaughterhouse? Who's going to tend to the meat? I guess as his son, you'd take over. Right? Yeah. I can't imagine a better job than working in a slaughterhouse. Ah, uh, let's say I don't, I don't really want to work in a filthy slaughterhouse. Bite your tongue with that serpent's tooth. Oh, sorry. Your dad's slaughterhouse is the most successful business in Harvest. You'll love it there. Oh, sure. Cutting animals open may not be much fun. Reaching into their bodies and yanking out the bloody guts, intestines dangling and slapping against yeah. you, the smell of death and shit in your nostrils all the time. Well, those are all definite cons. But once you're done, the guts what have the been fuck? washed into the gutters. What are you left with? Meat. Rows and rows of scrumptious red meat. Like, I know this is a horror game, but I didn't need that heart attack. Fuck you, game. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Let's ask him about Slaughterhouse again. I can't imagine a better... Sure, it'd be just dandy. And you can't argue with success. Everyone in Harvest gets their meat from your dad. What a grand <laughs> business to go into. I love these lines. Oh, sure. Cutting animals open may not be much fun. Oh god, let's see Reaching if, let's see if he does it again. Yanking out the bloody guts, intestines dangling and slapping against you. The smell of death and shit in your nostrils all the time. Such a good line. Well, the smell of death. Those shit. are all definite cons. But once you're done, <laughs> oh jeez, washed into the that guts. Again. <laughs> what are you left with? Oh, meat. Oh jeez, rows and rows oh. of scrumptious. Yeah. Uh, hey dad, Mr. Pothead says hi and meet and uh, yeah. It's like I don't want to turn off the music because there's some legitimate decent tracks at some point. Turn it up for now though. Can't, Tiger Kitchen is a minty fresh looking scent. Huh. Plastic plant with a freshly watered soil along little styrofoam balls. Good. Ice box is locked. It's a big ice box. Bushes are preventing it from opening. Can't leave. Entire kitchen. Yeah. Well, let's go talk to Not Mom. Let's see if the audio is uh Weird. Weird. Name another game where turning the music off and then back on doesn't reset the music. That's weird, right? Hello, Steve. Have you flossed today? Just my ass. You look like my mom sent for the hair. Honestly, 
You men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. What a horrible thing to say. You're both standing around baking cookies. Same cut of dress, same pearls. So bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about baking cookies. The Harvest Charity Bake Sale is Friday, you know, and oh by God. gosh, Mrs. Marvin Potsdam Jr. can be counted on to do her share. She does look like Sarah Palin, you're right. Oh my god, and they're defending against the Russians. Illuminati confirmed. Let's ask about pearls. Just because I'm doing housework doesn't mean I have to be a drudge. It's a wife's duty to look good for her husband at all times. What's wrong with wearing pearls, for heaven's sake? I don't know. Nothing, nothing but... You look like June Cleaver. Some kind of sitcom mom. Sitcom? Jeez, you know. A situation comedy. The weird part is, I can't remember how I know that. I'm much too busy with housework to watch TV. Maybe Mr. Potsdam would know about sitcoms. Stephanie doesn't watch TV, though. She's grounded. Oh. You mustn't be too hard on Mr. Potsdam, Steve. He's a disappointed man. Uh -huh. No matter how many lodge admission forms he fills out, they keep turning him down. He has a new application in, though. So keep your fingers crossed. If he joins the lodge, you and Stephanie can have your wedding in the Chapel of Love rather than over at Moynihan's place. Yeah, I probably don't want to get in there. Mr. Moynihan runs the Wayward Hotel and the Shady Oaks Funeral Parlor. It's rumored... He has connections with the Lodge, but the Order keeps that kind of thing secret. Hmm. So Mr. Poston has tried to get him to put in a good word for his Lodge application, but so far... Not working out, eh? What can you tell me about the Lodge? Just that they're exclusive and secretive. Sounds good. If you're curious, you ought to pick up a Lodge application at the post office and take it over to the Sergeant at Arms. Is that his full name? Isn't that a thought? Forget Mr. Potsdam. If you became a member of the Order, we could hold the wedding inside the Lodge. My, wouldn't that be lovely? It does sound kind of nice, actually. Uh, tell me about this wedding. Tell me about this wedding. Oh, my God. Well, it's set for three weeks. We're holding it over at Shady Oaks, Mr. Moynihan's funeral parlor. Say what? Now, I know it's not a very romantic place, but there's nowhere else to hold it, thanks to Mr. Potsdam. No. Oh, we already know about that. Tell me about Stephanie. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, S Stephanie? S Stephanie? Sorry, I didn't catch that. What's your daughter's name? What? Give my regards to your parents. I forgot fucking Stephanie's name. If it isn't my favorite son-in-law, what brings you here again? Uh, tell me about... <clears throat> what was that thing we were going to ask him about? Sitcom. Stop mumbling, Steve. I can't understand you at all. Oh, sorry. Tell me about sitcom. Stop mumbling, Steve. I can't understand you at all. Oh, no luck. Okay. Oh, yeah, Stephanie? Oh, what the fuck? There you go. I really need to see Stephanie. Mrs. Potsdam grounded Stephanie. Sorry, Steve. Yeah. Well, how come you know what a Stephanie is, but you don't know what a Stephanie is? Hello, dear. Yes, I've come to see Stephanie. Yes, absolutely. She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's grounded until the wedding. Well, I'll ground her on the wedding, if that helps. Give my regards to your parents. I don't even know what that means, but it means something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sit, commie. <laughs> oh no! Hmm, high tech topperware, TM. Plaque had its metal plate removed. Device is slowly releasing. Release, <laughs> slowly releasing noxious smelling chemicals in the hallway. So, you know, one of those things. Oh yeah. Plastic plant has had enough water to last a good while. Your makeup looks just. Oh, okay. Books are fakes. <laughs> Ceramic baby shoes? I wonder if we get that to Joey. Several books about red meat and its importance to living well. I can dig it. I, it's one of these two pictures, if memory serves. Um, 
puts a scene that might be considered PG. Maybe, maybe people are going to want to cover their eyes. Picture on the wall is hanging a bit crooked. Uh, if, um, if you don't uh, if you're under 18, close your eyes. I'll tell you in the look. I'm pretty sure this is this. It's about as risque we get in the game, I think. Oh, we should probably uh, close it again, huh? Oh, ch shit. See, I, uh, whatever. This cabinet reeks of various toiletries. It's covered what appears to be toothpaste, pubic hair, and snot. Oh. Here's one overly used paper towel. She's pretty. Coarse sandpaper would be painful to wipe with this stuff. 104 spectacular view of aluminum siding. Hmm. Wads of used tissues fill this trash can, some of them stuck to the sides. Oh, yum. A thin layer of hair coats virtually every inch of a ceramic and the rubber... Ducky has seen better days. Can I take that rubber ducky? Oh, what the fuck? Yes! Now we're talking. This <laughs> rubber ducky really pissed Steve off. Damn, she's human, no twist there. Yeah. Got a headache? Aspirin. Okay. Horror lube. Great for getting in and out of tight spots. Oh, Granny's awake again. One hour cough medicine, yeah. Yeast disinfectant, not to be used for baking cookies. Oh, let me take that. What's this thing? Zippy vitamins? Yeah. Tampons. Better ask Stephanie about these. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> Same with the toothpaste. Mm. Yeah, toothpaste to be good. Dental. 300 yards of dental floss. That could be good. Band-aids? No, none of this stuff. Can't take any of the useful items. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll go meet Stephanie. <clears throat> oh, hi. It's definitely not what you're wearing. Also, why were you wearing what you were wearing before? She has nice taste. Okay. It's like the one back home, except pink. Yeah, these rooms kind of look similar, actually. To be honest with you. Can't seem to do anything else here. I wonder if she knows who I am. Who are you? Oh. What are you doing in my room? Haven't you heard? We're getting married. So, you're the one. Steve, isn't it? You mean, you don't know me? I mean, I don't know anyone. I don't remember anything. How many times do I have to say it? Just once, Stephanie, because I can't remember a damn thing either. Really? Oh, God, I thought it was just me. You're not alone. Can you tell me what's going on here? Those people downstairs have locked me in my room. They say I'm grounded until the wedding. Why don't you just leave out the window or come downstairs? Or why are you wearing Nikes in bed? Questions. <laughs> Hi. Granny can't sleep. She just went and microwaved her tea. They claim to be my parents. I can't dispute it because I can't remember for sure one way or the other, but... It doesn't feel right. I know what you mean. I don't belong here. No one will believe me. I've got amnesia. Do you have any idea where you do belong? No, but I'm fairly sure I don't belong in Harvest. Yeah. I can't remember anything. But I feel in my heart that the woman downstairs is not my mother. Hmm. She's like this thing. Like a parody. A bad joke with mother as the punchline. Does that make any sense? Uh, yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one who sees it that way. I thought I was going crazy. Join the club. But we can't both be crazy, well, yes, Stephanie. You can, yes, you can, yeah. Either way, something really weird is going on here. I've got to escape, and so do you. Because in a way, whether you know it or not, I think we're both grounded. Then why don't we get married? Have our honeymoon out of harvest. It's been hell. They treat me well, but they won't let me leave this room. 
Not even to go out in the yard. Not until the wedding. They won't tell you why? Each one blames the other for grounding me. <laughs> That's funny. They make up different excuses. Different things I did. None of which I remember. So I sit up here. Watch the world outside my window. And listen to the noises in the house. Whew. Um, I don't really want to know what noise is. Uh, I can give you a spoiler about the bathroom there, but... Um, you heard or seen anything that might help us figure this out. Every morning, a weird boy comes to the house no, and picks up the paper. that's Jimmy. He what doesn't deliver the paper. He picks up scrap paper that Miss Potsdam sets out on the porch for him. Some morning she forgets, and the boy gets furious. He gives me the creeps. Anything else you can tell me? I hear these weird scraping sounds in the bathroom sometimes. Like something is sliding along the wall. Claws, maybe. And Mr. Potsdam, I don't like the way my dear daddy looks at me. Both of them are always watching me. But especially him. You don't think they're dangerous, do you? I think this whole place is dangerous. I think we've got to escape. Before it's too late. Well, why don't we just walk out the front door? Escape? Harvest is a prison, Steve. Don't forget that. Uh, you know, I, I think she's right. Of course I'm right. Oh. Well, fuck you. Maybe my amnesia isn't total after all. You're familiar to me. Like we've met before. In another life. Well, Maybe we you. really do live here. Maybe we were together, and the same thing happened to both of us. An accident. Something. Neither of us has bumps on our heads, if that's what you're getting at. Have you been able to remember anything else? <laughs> anything at all? Nice. Well, I have had these recurring dreams. Just fragments, really. Hmm. Strange, abstract images. Liquid, chrome. Probably just a dream. What? Well, <laughs> have you thought about how to escape Harvest? Fuck you, Steve. Also, uh, whatever. I was like, oh, neither of us have bumps on our head. It's like people in coma don't dream that they're in a coma. Maybe they do. That would be pretty weird. Um, well, do you know anything about the lodge? Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge. This order of the Harvest Moon. Uh -huh. They're responsible for this insane bake sale that's coming and for the Harvest Blood Drive, too. When people talk about the lodge, it's always in this hushed, reverent tone. Oh god, what? Mom keeps telling me that women can't join, but she keeps pressuring me to get you to join. She's not the only one who wants me to sign on with the lodge. That's probably the worst thing you could do. Hmm. You think the lodge is some kind of trap? I think all of Harvest is a trap. So, so why is... That's true. Yeah. Maybe joining the lodge is the way out. That's clever, Steve. Look. Why not explore the town a little? I can't get out of here, but if I could, that's what I'd do. Maybe you can figure out what's happening here without going anywhere near the lodge. You're really afraid of the lodge, aren't you? I look at that building, all lit up at night, and I get scared. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the damn thing. Seem like a harmless bunch of masons to you? Who said there were masons? Nobody brought that Illuminati propaganda into this. visit me soon, okay? Yeah, I'll visit you whenever. Just practice my... Oh my god, I can punch in directions. Yes. What happens if we punch, Mr... No, let's... Let's save, I'm curious. <gasps> Holy Jesus Christ. Fuck. Whoops. Um. <laughs> Shit. Wow, the acting here looks so good. That was actually, that was well done. That was it. <laughs> oh my, Russian <laughs> area. Oh 
god. <laughs> oh, oh. What god. were you thinking? Attacking someone like that? With so many witnesses around? You'll have plenty of time to think about it, boy. Oh, the best sheriff? Somebody help me! Yeah, please. Um, I made a, I made a mistake. What do you people want from me? <laughs> Too late for that, boy. What? No! I need sergeant. What? Sar oh, God. Are you fucking borrowed, or what's going on? Psychic Dr. Claw. <laughs> I'm acting by talking and just moving my eyebrows. Wow. Okay, I mean, everything happened. Hang on, I, I want to see if I can punch the, the, the fake mom, too. Wow, this video game is just amazing. Oh, sorry, I'm a little too close. Oh, hang on, we're getting there. We're getting to her plane. Mm. Just a little... She's like just too far in the background. I don't know if we can get her. We'll try, team, we'll try. No, she's too far in the background to get a punch in. Hang on, let's see if we can punch Stephanie. That's got to end the game, right? Oh god, there's no way I can get over there. No. Why well, won't even let me punch her? Oh well, alright. What is that thing? You guys see that? Okay, I'll give you guys two options. Because I know Boro's going to have to start going to bed, because he needs to be up early, and that's fine. Um, do we... Okay, let, no, no. Let's let's be fair to everybody. It's getting a bit late. We're going to call it here. Um, call this Twitch 1, and we will end it. Um, and that's all cool and stuff. And tomorrow we'll go visit the Wasp Lady, and uh, continue on from there. So you meet some more people. Maybe try and figure out what's going on in, in Harvest. Um, so thanks for joining me, guys. I may be back. Um, probably not for, like, you know, like 20 minutes. Um, so if I come back, it's just going to be factorial and relaxing and stuff like that and falling asleep. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll do some editing or something like that. But take it easy, everyone. Have a nice night. And to anyone that, you know, sticks around, again, don't don't feel like you have to stick around. It may or may not happen. But, um, you know, rest up, especially you borrowed. Try and, try and be awake in the morning. <laughs> take it easy.